we rock. Sex workers rock. I mean, you know, we might put our boot all over each other's neck, but somebody else get in there and put their boot on our neck and see how fast we start, you know. Thank you for joining us for another episode of On the Horizon, a podcast about what's on the horizon for sex workers and how to navigate it. I'm Jesse Sage, and you can find me on Twitter at sapiotextual and at jessiesage.com. And I'm Melrose Michaels, and you can find me at Melrose Michaels on social and melrosemichaels.com. Just a reminder, if you are enjoying the podcast on Apple, please leave us a five-star rating and review because it really helps us to grow as a podcast and better share information from our guests to the sex work community as a whole. Last but not least, if you want to support the podcast, please go to anchor.fm forward slash horizon spelled W-H-O-R-I-Z-O-N to become a premium subscriber of On the Horizon, which unlocks two bonus episodes on the 8th and 22nd of each month with tons of extra exclusive footage from ourselves and our guests. Who misses free and affordable ads without the anti-sex work rhetoric? Assembly 4 is a team of sex workers and technologists from Melbourne, Australia, aiming to bring back free and fair advertising to the sex work community. They also give back to organizations based in harm reduction, sex work, and education. Stepping away from the clunky design of traditional platforms, their platform, Trist.link, is a refreshing and well-needed change in both presentation and mission. It is free to join and open to all. In the words of an A4 user, from the policies to the language, to the advice and tips, it makes such a big difference to feel encouraged and supported instead of policed. This is an exciting episode for uh, many reasons, but one of them being that it's around community and mutual aid, Mm -hmm. which is something sex workers are phenomenal at because we don't have a whole lot of other aid coming our way. (laughs) Um, So the fact that we can organize and raise mutual aid Mm -hmm. and support each other as a community is something we have a lot to teach mainstream about because although you can do do similar things, yeah, you don't have the (laughs) same stakes that we do at play. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, this, this came so into such clear focus during the pandemic when yeah. people who people who stopped working went on unemployment and they had pandemic benefits mm-hmm. and small businesses got small business loans and lewd companies like ours like weren't given any aid. So um, yeah. what did sex workers do? They had to like creatively come together and figure out how to share resources and mm-hmm. redistribute them. So yeah, I mean, that's a thing that sex workers do. We have two guests. Yes. We have um, Chris from the Desiree Alliance. And that was exciting because I've interacted with her so many times, but I haven't Online. actually met yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. It was so <laughs> nice to put a face to the name. And if yeah. you guys are tuning in who also interact with Desiree Online, now you get to meet them. So yeah. this is going to be really great. <laughs> yeah. And she talked a lot about like what's happened with the Desiree Alliance starting in 2006 when they mm. started up until now, how FOSTA SESTA put through a monkey wrench into sex work organizing, which yeah. is really important to recognize um and like what kind of projects they're working on Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. and we also had dina stanley who is a local local to me um i know all of you guys aren't in pittsburgh but um is a pittsburgh-based organizer that did a lot of organizing with me when i did swap pittsburgh and we also worked on coalitions um to stop police uh in pittsburgh for from using condoms and cell phones as instruments of crime um we did a lot of uh activism and she uh not only works with sex work activism but is a really big um powerful figure in pittsburgh for trans community organizing and trans rights yes and a lot of what dina really brought to this conversation for me was a lot of emphasis on you know Education and information, which Mm -hmm. it seems like such an obvious thing when you're talking about, you know, community and mutual aid. But in reality, it's the piece of like different communities are experiencing this differently and there needs to be education on how to navigate it for marginalized people. So Mm -hmm. that really hit home. And then the fact that uh, she was from the South. So I know right Mm -hmm. innately from my own experience, like being a sex worker from the South, that is, it's a whole nother layer to what you can't do. And then a black trans sex worker from the South, like Dina is. Yeah. 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 So the fact that they are able to kind of highlight 
um, that there needs to be resources and systems in place to help um, other marginalized sex workers navigate. Mm -hmm. Um, And also still while doing the work of activism against all of those factors. It's incredible. And it was great to hear their stories. Yeah. Yeah. So stay tuned. What sex workers can teach you about community community. and mutual aid. Perfect. (laughs) Chris Sardina is the director of National Sex Worker Rights Organization, Desiree Alliance. She holds a bachelor's degree in women's studies, U.S. history, and a master's in social justice. Hi, welcome, Chris. It's nice to have you here. Absolutely. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. So can you introduce yourself and the work that you do with Desiree Alliance? I'm Chris Sardina. I am the director of Desiree Alliance and have been... um, co-director since 2010 and then director since 2015. And I've been with Desiree Alliance since 2006. So we're getting, you know, wow. we're on the up upswing of 20 years now. Wow. Mm-hmm. So c- what does Desiree Alliance do? We're a sex worker rights group. Um, we've been on mm-hmm. the decrim platform since the, since the jump. Um, We've since taken a stance of anti-criminalization because um, decrim will not look the same in every place that decrim is trying to be had, Mm -hmm. Um, especially in communities of color and communities that are um, what you call high stressed, which means poor, um, which is where I live, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know. Um, you know, yeah. high, so anything that, you know, you've got a lot of police presence and, and shit like that, um, you're not going to get the same decrim as, you know, people would like to yeah. see and raise their fist at. Yeah. So we go on anti-criminalization. What is, what is the distinction? Decrim, you know, just specifies what it can decriminalize. But anti-criminalization, if they, a lot of times if they can't get you for one thing, you know, they don't have a specific prostitution mm-hmm. statute or, you know, law or enforcement or whatever the fuck they do, um, then, you know, mm-hmm. they'll charge you with something else. And it's just the same in a lot of things, like with HIV criminalization, um, there's certain things mm-hmm. that, you know, Arizona doesn't have, which is where I'm from. Arizona doesn't have a specific HIV statute, but they can get you for something else if you're out there working and positive yeah. with a positive status. Mm-hmm. So it's things like that with you encompass the whole anti-criminalization, mm-hmm. um, you know, standpoint that it, it just encompasses more versus decrim, which encompasses a certain you know a certain thing you know don't yeah, you can you know you won't get arrested if you go to law enforcement and 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 things like mm-hmm. that and that's decrim but anti-criminalization encompasses the whole thing so that that's kind of the standpoint yeah, we decided like to, mm-hmm. to yeah. take about i don't know 10 years ago <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. That seems really important. So how, like, what are your like strategies to, for, um, within like the Desiree Alliance for like pushing anti-criminalization? Do you work more on the legislative level or in kind of the grassroots, like ground up or like, what does your day to day like work look like? We're, you know, we're a grassroots organization that has been working on the national level. We're a national organization. So um, mm-hmm. we offer support to um, people that that do decrim work. Um, not all people because, I, you know, some of them have their own agenda. But <laughs> at the same time, um, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um but, so, you know, so so we do a lot of support. We do a lot of writing to legislators. We do a lot mm-hmm. of writing for the United Nations on human rights and, you know, which encompasses mm-hmm. sex worker rights. So we, you know, Desiree yeah, Alliance, right. since 2010, um, since we took over in 2010, we became co-directors with Sharmis Outlaw. And then I became director in 2015. But you know, we have uh, went outside sex worker rights 
because a lot of groups, you know, mm-hmm. and move social justice movements or, you know, anti-criminalization movements, decrim movements, things like that. Um, the doors were closed to us, you know, we're prostitutes. Oh my yeah. God, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to mess with those people because it's, so such yeah. stigma surrounding it. So Desiree Alliance really has worked hard all these years to open those doors to what sex worker rights are mm-hmm. and um, how we can, yeah. you know, how we can come together and strategize together because mm-hmm. one movement you're oppressed and criminalized. Hey, we're oppressed and criminalized, you know, and, yeah. and this yeah. is, right. you know, so Desiree Alliance has really worked hard to open those doors that were once closed to us to get to know what sex worker rights are, because if you don't know, then mm-hmm. you just get these stigmas and, and you get these ideas in your yeah. head of what, um, what sex work is. So we've, we've done a lot of education yeah. around that. We've done, um, you know, a lot of humanizing around us. I'd, I'd say humanizing yeah. versus, um, you know, hey, look at us, we're sex workers and we got our rights, you know. So yeah. just to humanize us a, a lot makes a big difference. Yeah, you, you brought something up too that I'd like to get into as well because this uh, part of the season is all about what sex workers can teach non-sex workers about X. And I think something I'd like to get into too is about the fact that because of legislation like SESTA FASTA, we're not able to organize anymore because of how vague that language is. So could you speak to that a little bit and why, you know, Desiree isn't having real in-person events anymore? Well, Desiree came about as the first national sex worker conference in the United States. Um, We were the first to, you know, have a big gathering. We um, started Desiree Alliance because of the Green River Killer, um, Gary Ridgway, who when um, was killing um, street based workers um, along the and, and throwing them in the Columbia River by the banks, the um, when he got finally caught, they asked him, why did you do it? And he said, because he could. And so that really, um, with the founder of Desiree, really resonated, who is also part of, um, who is part co-founder of Swap. So Swap came, then Desiree came, Mm -hmm. and then that's how that happened. Um, So what, what, um, so we held a conference. The very first conference was in 2006. It was five days. It, it, people from all over the world came. And so Desiree kind of went off that platform. So every Mm -hmm two or three years whenever we could get funding mm-hmm. um, for it because it's really expensive to hold a five-day conference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's yeah. like up to a hundred thousand yeah. bucks easy. Yeah. I and bet. um so we um so we we sponsored conference and gave a lot of scholarships away and it was known worldwide people would come to Desiree for just for the um you know we're very political Mm -hmm. because basically Desiree Alliance is a political sex worker rights organization and so you know when FOSTA SESTA came around it took every, I mean, before I announced it, I said, fuck, we're fucked. We're just fucked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because I thought, it, and and I thought about it for months of how to, how we could hold this conference mm-hmm. without FOSTA SESTA affecting us. Yeah. And I mean, I, every scenario for months and, and it killed me, you know, yeah. every scenario that I could possibly think of that they wouldn't come after us. And we have different themes as well. And in 2019, we were going to have our seventh national conference and it was about, um, I'm a title maker, um, immigration, migration, and sex work. So Mm -hmm. immigration Mm -hmm. being from Arizona is really near and dear to my heart. And so, you know, I, it's been on my mind for years. I, we need to have this type of conference and invite our, you know, invite the immigrant and migrant community, which we, you know, we've always had a good, a, a good audience of that. Um, Desiree Alliance is pretty well rounded in our conferences, so mm-hmm. um, you see a lot of different sexualities, identities, you know, different, mm-hmm. um, you know, 
we tried to make it not so pale and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. pasty. So, you know, we, tr- we try to do that. But, um, and so, so when it came to it, I thought, you know, there was going to be, if we held that type of conference on immigration and migration, then, um, then what was going to happen was here comes ICE and here mm-hmm. comes the state and the federal and the local mm-hmm. cops coming in and swooping in and arresting everyone and which, mm-hmm. you know, could be a death sentence for some people yeah. being deported yeah. and going back to a country where maybe prostitution, you know, can get you killed like it just like it can here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, so just going back to a country that maybe, you know, you will be dead by the time you get off the, you know, off the deport plane. And so, you know, and plus people go to work there. People come to Desiree to work. That's just a fact where you get a horror conference, you know, you're (laughs) going to get people that work. And a lot of people, you know, come to Desiree Alliance to work in a different city. We hold them in different cities. Mm -hmm. Like last, last time we held it in New Orleans, right there on Bourbon street. So, um, you know, so we thought if one person just puts up one ad, yeah, um, that could be considered trafficking. Right. So it was really, really, you know, it, I went into this spiral of deep depression for like a year after I finally announced it after months, I say, you know, talking to my board, our board and what do we do? And it's just like, we can't take the risk for right. our attendees. And we also can't take the risk for our organization. Yeah. So it was really sad, you know, sad, the biggest event, you know, that sex workers have in the U S and we had to cancel it. It was the one place where we could get together for five days. It was the one place, you know, it was a conference. We had five tracks. We had, you know, activism, business, harm reduction, educate academics, um, and something else. But there was five tracks. So, you know, we had, you know, 500 plus people coming. And so, you know, from all over the world. So it was a really huge blow to... um, to sex workers and our, you know, just coming together to strategize, you know, because we're so fractured here in the United right. States. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, the, it was really a fucked up situation. Yeah. yeah. Do you think so? Because sex workers have these kinds of challenges um, to just do things like get together and share resources and mm-hmm. information. Do you think that we have a, a skill set that other organizations don't have because of the way we have to overcome kind of these obstacles? <laughs> You think? <laughs> you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we we get around. Yeah. We get around, you know, every way we can. And, um, you know, we've always done that. Yeah. We've had to, because, it, you know, even with other movements that don't support us, we've had to push back, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. And this is why we decided years ago to go outside of sex worker rights and talk about, you know, our movement to other movements. And, and so this, you know, that's helped quite a bit, but at the same time, you know, we've, we've had to get around stuff. And, and that was what was so disheartening about, you know, canceling the conference mm-hmm. was because there, I couldn't find any way to get around it. People are going, we'll go to another country. And it's like, I can't even get out of the fucking country yeah. because I'm a felon and I'm a multiple felon. So I can't get a passport. Right. Um, you know, and, and so plus it's a U.S. conference. It's not, you know, right, a yeah. Canadian conference or a European conference. It's a U.S. conference. Right. And so, you know, there was a lot of things. Well, why don't you you know, can we do it this way? Can we do it that way? And and I mean, believe me, I have thought of every scenario that we could, that could possibly mm-hmm. be to get around it. And it was the one thing that I found that we couldn't get around. Yeah. So it was really, you know, yeah, but, but I mean, we're resourceful. That's for damn sure. <laughs> we've held, um, mm-hmm. we've held small summits, Mm-hmm. you know, to where we wouldn't be on the radar. Because when you go to, when you plan a conference, you get with a, um, and we always have it in a big hotel. 
And, um, and that's another problem getting a hotel to accept us. Right. So, but, um, when you come in, they hospitality works hand in hand with law enforcement. Yeah, absolutely. So we go, we start planning a year ahead and they know we're coming a year before we even get there. Yeah. The pol- you know, law enforcement. So, mm-hmm. you know, they know we're coming and with FOSTA and SESTA, you know, that would give them plenty of time to, to, you know, gear up with their mm-hmm. tactical shit. And yeah. it would have just been a fucking mess. And I wasn't going to do that to anyone. Yeah. Um, you know, and me either. I, I didn't want, I'm 61. I didn't want to yeah. go to fucking prison I again. Wa- I was going to say, I want to pivot to the, the mutual aid part of this, because one of the mm-hmm. things that you said earlier was that you, when the conference was going, you did a lot of scholarships, but I know like there's also a lot like, Sex work, uh, especially I saw this a lot during the pandemic mm-hmm. and post FOSTA SESTA, like uh, we're sending the same $20 around to each other, like in circles. And I wanted yeah. to, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, that's that's real. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you a little bit from like the organizing perspective about like what that looks like for you guys and how you um, how you conceptualize like mutual aid within the community. Well, that's what they will see. Desiree didn't have any money for mutual aid. So we, Mm -hmm. you know, just passed it along. And and when you go back where you mentioned earlier how resourceful we are, Mm -hmm. because we didn't qualify for the stimulus or I didn't. um, I didn't either. (laughs) You know, and a lot of, you know, a lot Mm -hmm. of people didn't qualify for the stimulus because most of us, you don't see us branded online. You don't see us... um, Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, you don't see, you know, they they don't have a million and five followers or, mm-hmm. you know, people aren't on only fans. That was an option mm-hmm. which got flooded. The market got saturated. Right. So, you know, their, their, their earnings went down or mm-hmm. they were making $7 a month or something, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. out of the millions that, that signed up. But, um, you know, you one thing about sex workers, the minute that happened, I mean, the minute that this pandemic shut the world down, I mean, I'm 61 years old. I've never seen the world shut down and I've been through yeah. quite a few pandemics. I've never seen the world shut down. And that was like a first for everybody. And so, um, you know, to see sex workers jump up and do the mutual aid thing Mm -hmm. and and for those, you know, who could help did and those who couldn't help did. And that was something that really, you know, we rock. Sex workers rock. I mean, you know, we might put our boot all over each other's neck, but somebody else get in there and put their boot on our (laughs) neck and see how fast. We start, you know, beating your ass. So, um, <laughs> you know, it was something that was really, it was mm-hmm. get you get off her neck. I've got my foot on it right now. But, you know, it was something that really, <laughs> it was something that really, um, really warmed my heart to see. Mm-hmm. And it didn't surprise me because I've seen it before. I mean, yeah. at Desiree conferences, there's always, you know, a few that don't, that, that come just to come, Yeah, you know, um, they don't have any money with them. They don't mm-hmm. have any resources or any extra spending money for food or anything like that. We always supply food. We have a room with a refrigerator and stuff like that. But, but, you know, to kind of connect that we would pass a hat around, you know, somebody would come up to me and go, Chris, you know, I, I don't have any money. Boom. We pass that hat around Mm -hmm. and there'd be three, 400 bucks in it for that person. So this is how I saw, you know, see us taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, that's exactly what we did. We kind of passed, like you said, passed the same 20 bucks around. (laughs) We passed the hat around and, and we really, um, you know, we made a difference for some people. I mean, you know, that made help them mm-hmm. survive during this pandemic because we weren't getting any help from the damn fucking government. 
Right. Yeah. Um, Which, in yeah. fact, they made sure we didn't get yeah. help. Yeah. And so, you know, they made, and not just sex workers, but a lot of people, mm-hmm. yeah. um, you know, a lot of people were in the same boat, but you didn't see the same type of mutual aid that sex workers did. Right. Sex workers rocked on that. Yeah. You know, we yeah. just came together and it was, it was wonderful. Mm-hmm. And we're still coming together, you know, because yeah. people are still feeling the effects yeah. Um, of what, you know, three months can tear you up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I had to homeschool a fourth grader. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my grandkid. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know fourth grade math. And I still don't know fourth grade math. You know? Um, and they have that new I math, just which said, is like, like almost ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's mm-hmm. it. Mental math. And I'm going, well, I can go into Walmart and, you know, get all this <laughs> shit and know what my budget is but god think about it mental math and all these equations i know whatever anyways yeah. i said where's your mom yeah i one of the things that i saw like the last couple of weeks um just like as an example of this um you raising money for somebody mm-hmm. who needed an abortion because that's something like i think we've talked on this um show before about the fact that like sex worker rights and reproductive rights are often very like very aligned aligned too and so i wonder if you want to talk a little bit about we're that. everywhere yeah right? You can't talk about sex workers without or sex work without talking about repro, yeah. uh, reproductive health rights and justice. You can't talk about um, health care without sex work. Yeah. You can't talk about, you know, um, HIV or AIDS without. You can't talk about LGBTQ rights without sex work being included in that because we're, you know, we're human beings. We're everywhere. Yeah. And, um, you know, someone you know, someone you love is a sex worker. That's very true. Um, but one thing, you know, is one of my many kids, um, I have a million of them. <laughs> you that, said that. You know, I'm 61 now. <laughs> Right. My kids are in their third. My two daughters are in their 30s and 40s. So I've had kids, you know, and then my my grandkids and my nieces and nephews Mm -hmm. and and all that. You know, there's just been kids around in in my entire life. And so, you know, I had a kid. They're not kids. They're in their 30s. But whatever. (laughs) They're still kids to me because Mm -hmm. they were kids, you know, when when, you know, my daughter and and this woman have been friends since they were kids. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, all growing up, they're still my children. You know, yeah, I love them. Yeah. And so she says, I know can you can help me with resources. What do I do? I'm pregnant. And mm-hmm. she's got two kids and works at Burger King and, you know, no a single mom. So I thought, well, you know what? Let's get you some money. Yeah. Because in where she is, the state had so many restrictions that by the time she got through to a doctor or it, it would have been, it's, it's going to be too late. Yeah. So, but the next state over has no restrictions. So, you know, I said, you know, let's get you over there and we'll get, I'll get you some money. So I put it out on Twitter. I put it out on my social medias. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, you know, cause reproductive rights, as as a 61 year old woman i've never owned my body i mean you know there wasn't even birth control when i was born yeah. in 1960 imagine that mm-hmm. there was no abortion mm-hmm. abortion was illegal back alley abortions then still and um you know so reproductive rights health and justice is one of the things that are nearest and dear yeah. to my heart, mm-hmm. nearest and dearest. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, um, you know, I don't own my body still at 61. My daughter's 30s and 40s still don't own yeah. their body. My granddaughters don't own their body. And now my great granddaughter doesn't own her body. That's kind of fucked up. It is. Yeah. That's four mm-hmm. generations just in my in my line. Mm-hmm. And so when this girl, this woman came to me, I said, let's get you some money, you yeah. know, so you don't have to 
you know, when you take off work at Burger King, you're not going to get fired or you're not going to, you know, get behind on your rent with your two children, which leads to eviction, which leads to homelessness, which leads to another unwanted child that you're dragging around. Yeah. Now you've got, you know, two kids and a baby on your hip, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and you're homeless. Now what do you do? Right. Let's get you yeah. some money. And I mean, in a day and a half, we went from um, zero to almost eight hundred dollars. And I'm going to shout it out. Yeah. And I don't know when this is going to, um, but you can cash out me or PayPal me. Yeah. And every penny, and and she couldn't out herself. I said, let's make yeah. you a GoFundMe. She goes, well, you know, I'm in a small town, and I don't want to be outed. Mm-hmm. And so there was another factor in that, yeah. which I got. She's in a she, rural town yeah. with, you know, a few thousand people working at the only Burger King in town. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what kind of stigma, what, you know, we come from a very Republican state. Yeah. And so, you know, a God fearing yeah. community, mm-hmm. what's going to happen to her or her children right. or, you know, and, and that, and so we got, you know, I got enough for her. I would like to get her up to a thousand mm-hmm. so she can go get it done, mm-hmm. fly there, um, which, you know, I helped her check flights and stuff and it's a straight shot to where she wants to go. So it was, you know, fairly cheap plus a procedure. I mean, right there, that's a thousand bucks. Yeah. Um, she's got friends to stay with, so we didn't have to worry about that. What's your, so why don't you shout out your PayPal? And- well, what's your cash app? Because you said you guys are at 800. If I cash app you 200, will she be at a thousand? I'll do it right now. Fuck yes, it will. Yes. <laughs> what's your um, cash app? It's the dollar sign, mm-hmm. Christine, C R I S T I N E, Sardina, just like a fish, S A R. D-I-N-A. Is this it? I'm going to put it on the screen. Oh, I shoot. can't see that. Jesus, it's all white. Yep, that's me. Yeah, I want all everyone watching to see it too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. yes, that is me. Oh, my God. You just, you saved someone's life today. <gasps> that's really sweet. I don't deserve that. <laughs> I know she's going to miss a couple of days of work. Let, let's not make her struggle. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, with all these restrictions now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, fuck. Yeah, don't make, so it just hard. almost makes me cry because yeah. I, I've been fighting it for so many years and marched and fought and no women yeah. that have I know, had I have a 20 year old daughter and, and like. You know, I'm 44 and I'm, you know, phasing out of like worrying about pregnancy, but like my daughter's 20 (laughs) and it makes me like sick. Like think about and the other thing that people don't consider when legislation is like, Oh, a heartbeat bill and shit like that. that, That's six weeks. Most people can't get an appointment by the time they realize they've missed a period before six weeks of that time. So Mm -hmm. like really this is just a fuck you. Well, I'm in Arkansas. Yeah, exactly. My friend's in Arkansas and she, there was one. They've got one. They've got one. And it's eight weeks and you don't get an appointment for 10 weeks. You're fucked. Can't go to Texas. Can't go to Oklahoma because the Oklahoma just passed some shit. And so, you know, um, it it just gets to the point where, where do we have autonomy? You know, and it, and it's the same way with sex work. When you, when you get down to it, a lot of times when I speak to people about sex work, I said, it's not even about whether, how you feel about sex and work, Mm -hmm. um, makes no difference. It's about owning our bodies and how we labor with our bodies. Mm -hmm. When I check into Walmart every day, I'm laboring with my body. Absolutely. Um, you know, if I work at Burger King every day, I'm working with my body. Yeah. And so you really have to kind of bring it back to where, you know, and there's another movement we're in, the labor movement. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so how do you get a, autonomy over your mm-hmm. own working conditions and your own body? Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so that, you know, it's it's really, you know, it, it's where and it's not just reproductive rights aren't just for women either. Trans men have babies all the time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, so. You've got to think, and and then you get into that stigma. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just like this giant Snowball. fucking circle yeah. that you know it yeah. seems to it. 
you can't seem to get away from. Absolutely. But when are we going to, um, yeah. you know, stop making sex so filthy and dirty? Right. I like sex. Um, yeah, me too. We like sex. <laughs> you know, not so much anymore. Yeah. I mean, once I went through menopause and, and that kind of subsided, I have absolutely no use for any of it, um, you know, other than fighting for my rights to yeah. fuck if I want. You but know, back in the day, you were into illegal. it, huh? <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, to be illegal or be criminalized for enjoying sex is, you know, I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And there's another pro- problem there. Yeah. You know, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good place to read yeah. that because we are that. I mean, yeah. yeah. Our listeners are going to be like, well, uh, no, this is. Yeah, this is it was good. really yeah, great. People great. really knew the story. Wynn was supported his journey, his 50 oh, wow. mile journey. His whole journey in the Bible is 50 miles in three years. And then he got nailed. And. And, you know, that women supported yeah, him. Absolutely. Women financially supported God. Yeah. So, you know, God knows if they think about that. But, um, well, no, you know, so Jesus you. lived off of off women. Yeah. 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 Well, well, thank you so much. Where can people find you and your work? Yes. We're DesireeAlliance.org is our website. You can see a lot of our work that we do. Um you know, we're doing a lot of United Nations work right now on the elimination of racial discrimination. We do um, CEDAW, which is um, in discrimination against women. And so we do a lot of human rights work. Um, mm-hmm. And so DesireeAlliance.org, I'm at... Um, you can catch me on Twitter all the time <laughs> when I'm supposed to be working. I'm playing. Um, procrastination is my middle name. So we're, you know, Desiree Alliance um, and, and on Facebook as well, Desiree Alliance. So I'm not on Insta or Snap. I don't, you know, I'm done with that. I just can't deal with that shit. You know what I mean? That's way too many social medias. I hear you. I get that. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so it. much for the donation I that is so awesome today's episode is sponsored by ePlay an adult live streaming platform creating an online ecosystem for creators to engage with their fans that's easy exciting and empowering at ePlay you earn 80% of revenue on everything from live streaming to private messages with your fans to your sub club membership fan site ePlay even allows you to earn money while you sleep with offline tips. Do what makes you excited. Take control of your business, content, voice, and freedom. As a creator, consider joining ePlay today. Dina Stanley is the CEO and founder of Trans Uniting, a mutual aid nonprofit providing resources to Pittsburgh's trans community. Dina is a prominent social justice warrior amongst the Black trans community. Trans Uniting is a trans, non binary, and gender expansive organization working to better our community's lives here in Pittsburgh. Hi, Dina. Welcome Hi. to On the Horizon. I'm very happy to see you. You are a local pittsburgh or with me we know each other in real life actually <laughs> that's rare these days and it's wonderful to meet you so glad to meet yes, you. amazing to meet you as well <laughs> so dina can you introduce yourself to our audience sure so i am dina stanley um i live here in pittsburgh i'm a local advocate and activist um for the trans community yeah great and you have a lot of different hats like in the community yes <laughs> i'm also a business owner as well i i'm a pastry chef so i own a catering company um and yeah just do a lot of uh, work around the city for different mm-hmm. businesses and um corporations i'm curious like with all of the organizing and activism you've done is there things that stand out like right away super obvious that obviously like even though it's within sex work organizations organizing that instantly could cross over to organizations and mutual aid uh, activism groups outside of sex work? Just in information, you know, mm-hmm. navigating, you know, through these systems. A lot of times um, that's how they get us, it's, especially when we get, you know, caught up in these systems. Uh, they kind of uh, scare us into these plea deals and in different mm-hmm. situations. Instead you mean law of enforcement. Right. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's a that's a big thing it's like you know they 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 
kind of steer you into certain situations um, because we don't know our rights. So yeah. that was a big thing for me, you know, um, crossing over into the world. It was like, you know, you you learn a lot more. I'm like, shoot, if I would have known this back then, yeah. you know, this <laughs> wouldn't happen. <laughs> there was a lot of situations that wouldn't happen if I would have knew what I know now. So. Yeah. So do you feel like part of like the activism and organizing you've been doing since then is like helping to disseminate that information to communities? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the more information I get, um, I'm boots on the ground in my community. So the more information I get, I spread the word, you know, I disseminate mm. that throughout the community. So um, it, it, like I said, it's really hard, especially when you start getting into the different intersectionalities, of, yeah. of, you know, sex working, um, it gets harder for folks to get the information. So yeah. uh, um, since I'm boots on the ground in my community, I'm able to disseminate that information in the most uh, marginalized portion of the sex workers. Yeah. 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 So, that's cool. That's really cool. What do you think that some of the main like challenges for like organizing is particularly for like sex work organizers when uh, like when the work that we're doing is a criminalized, like how do you, what do you think those challenges are? I guess. And has it gotten harder post FOSTA SESTA? I mean, I guess that's a big question. question. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, you said about FOSTA SESTA? Yeah. Has it gotten harder since then? Absolutely. Because they shut everything down. So you have to navigate through these systems, you know, these different types of systems. And now other folks, you know, it was really easy access, especially like online and things is not as easy anymore. And then you have to be very cautious and careful when you're doing banking accounts and, and just different right. situations such as that, you know, and if you start, you know, navigating through those systems of, of, you know, maybe trying to open up a business of some sort, you yeah. know, and you, and you have to start trying to pay your taxes. So you have to figure that out and just different yeah. avenues that you have to do that you didn't have to do before, you know, right. this FOSTA SESTA took place. Right. Right. Yeah. So do you feel like um, it's really changed the way that you've like gone about doing like advocacy and organizing or um, how has it like impacted your your day to day? Um, Not so much. uh, Just making sure that they know that, you know, yeah, the thing Um, in our community, they really don't have that information. So making sure that they know that and just to be careful and be cautious about You know, um, they know that, you know, these sites were shut down, but they don't know the the ramification, like the whole big picture. They just know, okay, they shut down these sites. So what are we supposed to do? Now we have to learn to navigate through these new sites and, you know, just making sure that while they're navigating through these new new sites, you know, how to keep their self safe and keep their money as well. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) it's about making sure that they take their money because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to continue to keep us oppressed as women or as sex workers, period. You know, they don't want to see the uprise of of women for real, for real. That's what it's really about. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, because aside from just the fact of community that the piece about mutual aids, because I was always curious about this and a lot of like I am. I'm not super involved, like boots on the ground with activism in, in that way, especially in terms of like, like raising mutual aid or your resources uh, per se. But I w- always wondered if like, when it comes to having mutual, raising mutual aid or, or gathering resources for the sex work community, especially, is it easier or harder because we're sex workers? Because like we have a skill set of extracting money from people, <laughs> but does that translate into something where it's not transactional, where if they give money, they get X in return. I always was curious. Yeah, so, it's how can I say this? Oh fuck it. I'm just gonna say it. Good say you it. ain't gonna pick a tricker, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna say that. We you ain't gonna trick a tricker. So when you come to me, you gotta come correct because I'm telling them I'm a hoe too. So what's up? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we gonna do this. <laughs> no, but um, you know, if you know when when they come, this is what we have, this is what we can do for you, and that's just it. You know what yeah. I mean? There's nothing, there's no going around. There's not, none of that. This is, this is what we can do for you in this moment. You know what I mean? Because for a long time, (laughs) for, I don't never remember a time that we ever had any type of mutual aid or any type of help or any type of information out there at all whatsoever. So for you guys to be getting that, you should be grateful. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
Because I wish I had that back then. Like, I yeah. wish I prayed that I had that. I, when I was in Georgia, I got arrested twice. And, and the second time I got arrested, um, it was just felonious. It was just like bogus for real. And they just yeah. picked me up when they shouldn't have at all. So there was like literally nothing. And I still got charged and I still got in trouble, you know. Mm-hmm. And if I had that information that I have now back then, it wouldn't have, it would have went completely different. So, yeah. you know, like now when I talk to these girls, be grateful that, you know, and be happy and be excited, you know, that we, there is some type of, you know, somebody out there that's fighting for you. There's somebody out there that's doing all that because for a long time we, we were about each ourselves. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? There was not no community out of us over, especially well, in the black community, okay. there was no community, you know, like that, like there was giving out information. We was training folks and teaching them yeah. how to be able to be safe out there in the streets and what to do and what not to do. But it wasn't um, no information around yeah. keeping safe in that aspect. Like if you get if you get caught up in the system, how you navigate that, you know, yeah. um, how do you navigate the, you know, financial portion of it? None of that. And now we have all of that. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Do you feel like there's been um, do you think that there's been change for the better? Like coming up from um, like grassroots organizing and how do you how do you view the last like since you've been in the scene, I guess? Um, just I think there's it's a little I went just a little bit safer because we're giving them more information mm-hmm. before we were kind of like going into situations blind. Yeah. And now, you know, uh, we're able to give a little information, a little insight before yeah. people step into into the darkness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. I'm happy about that, you know, um, but on the same note, it's just like we kind of enable folks because they know there's certain resources out there. And sometimes they take advantage of that. Like you said, you're like, we out here to make a dollar. So we, we, we try to figure out how, you know, to keep that rolling. So yeah. uh, in, in a sense, it's, it, it, it's like, it's, it's unfortunate to say that, but it, it is like that. Sometimes they take advantage of, of the system. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, and, and this is, a, I guess, kind of a loaded question to you, because like a lot of the reason I started sex work CEO, cause, cause my philosophy, I, my background is more on the business side of things and like digital sex work. Right. So mm-hmm. my philosophy after seeing what happened in the pandemic where everyone kind of had to go online and like, couldn't be full service. A lot of people were out of that kind of work. And my thought was like, okay, all these big online creators got really successful off of the height of the increased traffic and money around the pandemic. Some of them, the larger creators usually, Mm -hmm. but I expected to see more of them like donating or helping lobby or giving back in ways that could affect change. And that didn't really happen. (laughs) So my whole thing was like, okay, if I could educate like uh, on the digital side, again, more creators to have the skill set to try to be successful on these kind of online platforms, maybe more people will give back or at least feel a responsibility to do that. And like, I'm curious if, if the, the sex workers in the community groups that you're in, for example, are the ones kind of coming in and out of the doors, the ones that are able to give back. And do you think those people feel a sense of responsibility to do so? Because like, I'm trying to instill that in people coming across like my <laughs> lens, like, look, I'll teach you how to do the thing I do as much as I can and what will translate to you because we're different. But at the same time, like I want to leave them with their sense of responsibility, like don't gatekeep, pass information along, be a All part right. of the community, give back, <laughs> you know, be part of free speech college and send in a donation, help us lot, like those kinds of things. That's only going to happen when everything, like when there's a hope, like the FOSS assessor sometimes, yeah. if they know about. It. So the thing is, a lot of folks don't know what's happening for right. them. They know that things are getting shut down, but they don't know, like like I said, the big, the Why? bigger picture around yeah. it, like the FOSS assessors and different situations like that. They just know, like, hey, the government shut them down. Oh well, you know, yeah. this yeah. is this is more of so of a fight or flight, like. I'm trying yeah. to survive. So right. if I'm trying to survive, I can't be helping the next person while I'm trying to totally. survive. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So that is the biggest thing. It's like, okay, if if there is a situation where, you know, I have to, I absolutely have to stand up and do this, then I'm going to do this. But if not, this is survival. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I'm just out here and I'm going to make my content all day long. Like, you know, only yeah. fans, like, they're going there 
24 seven, they're making content, they're putting out there, they're checking everything, they're, they're doing all of that. And when they have downtime, I'm going shopping, I'm going to, yeah. you know, because this is yeah. work, you know, so right. I'm working constantly. And when I'm not working, I'm going out here and I'm going to live my best life. Right. I'm not worry about everything else because I'm focused on the now, not the future, yeah. you know, or not the past. I'm, I'm in my now, I'm in my present, you know, and I have which cash. like is a good it's a good thing to like, that's a good like reminder though. I think that like you have to have a certain level of stability in order to even like be, be in a position activism. to be able to do yeah. that. Yeah. Position in class in a sense, you know, like, you know, uh, have just have that information, you yeah. know, uh, and, and a lot of folks, even though they do have a certain amount of information, they might not understand that information. They might not yeah. really get, you know, the, the consequence they might not they might not just get it at all but so if they're just like okay well that happened okay let me figure out how right. i'm gonna be able to be sustainable yeah that's what it's all about let me just figure out how i'm gonna be able to be okay right yeah. i know yeah. that they're they're attacking on some level right they don't bother me because i'm a hustler and i'm gonna get this money so yeah. that's you know what i mean yeah it, totally it, it yeah term, that's what it's about it's just about making sure that you hustle enough money to keep yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you feel like there's things that you like, this is kind of like a wrapping up question. Do you feel like there's things that you learned from like, from hustling, from like being in sex work or from being in like these communities that like have given you like skills to be able to like do the do the work that you're doing? Yes. Honey, how to get this money? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like y'all said, being able to navigate and, and make sure I keep getting that money from folks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being able to go into the room and and might not. So it it might be a room that I'm very uncomfortable in, but I'm still able to navigate through that room because yeah. of the lessons and teachings that I learned from doing sex work. So, yeah, you know what I mean, like it, it really helps in those types of rooms when you're trying to fundraise and get money, you know, because you yeah. start thinking about that. And even in business, you know, yeah. when I'm in my catering, you know, or just helping people in general, you know, because I'm looking at it in a different light than other, everybody else is because honey, I'm, I'm looking at it from the lens of a hug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we interviewed somebody else earlier today, and she was like, "Ask." We were asking her a similar thing about business, about and she's business. like, "You have to treat everyone like a client. Everyone's, Everyone's a, a client. client. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every single thing. Every single thing is a transaction. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. so you got treated as such. That's how I see it. Like every everything is transactional. So yeah. let, let me figure out how to tweak and twerk this transaction to fit best <laughs> for whatever situation <laughs> right. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, where can people like, where are you? Where can people find you? Yeah. And you work. Um, so I am on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, so my Twitter is the real chef Dina. My Instagram is Dina Nicole Smith. <laughs> Love, that. Love that. That's good. That's great. <laughs> and my Facebook is Dina Rhonda Stanley. Um, so you can find me on all of those. Um, and you can also find my organization, um, Trans Uniting. And that's Y-O-N-I-T-I-N-G um, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Okay. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Dina. It was really Thank fun to so see much. you again. Nice meeting you. <laughs> yes. Nice to meet you as well. This episode of On the Horizon is sponsored by DMCA Force. DMCA Force is the authorized DMC agent for the largest online creators and the platforms that they monetize. DMCA Force protects models, musicians, writers, videographers, artists, and tons of other creatives publishing their works online. With DMCA Force, you get 24-7 automated monitoring, flagging, and removal of stolen and pirated content. They use metadata and keywords relating to your work in collaboration with search engines to remove even the 10 to 15% of content on ghost sites that can't typically be scrubbed from the internet. They even offer the ability to fingerprint content and digitally watermark it as an added layer of security to protect the art you work so hard creating. Join DMCA Force today. Thank you for joining us for another episode of On the Horizon, a podcast about what's on the horizon for sex workers and how to navigate it. I'm Jesse Sage, and you can find me on Twitter at sapiotextual and at jessiesage.com. 
And I'm Melrose Michaels. And you can find me at Melrose Michaels on social and melrosemichaels.com. Just a reminder, if you are enjoying the podcast on Apple, please leave us a five-star rating and review because it really helps us to grow as a podcast and better share information from our guests to the sex work community as a whole. Last but not least, if you want to support the podcast, please go to anchor.fm forward slash horizon spelled W-H-O-R-I-Z-O-N to become a premium subscriber of On the Horizon, which unlocks two bonus episodes on the 8th and 22nd of each month with tons of extra exclusive footage from ourselves and our guests. <laughs>